Hi, welcome to the Brief Book Reviews channel, otherwise known as An Old Guy Reviews the Book That He's Read This Week. So what's the old guy read this week? Well, the book I've read this week is called The Queen of Poisons by author Robert Thorogood. Uh, it was released as a hardback here in the UK, published by HQ on the 18th of January 2024. And it's another adventure for the Marlowe Murder Club. Um, helpfully tells us on the front, it's a Marlowe Murder Club mystery. I guess the author, Robert Thorogood, is probably best known for his D.I. Richard Paul novels and the subsequent very successful TV series, Death in Paradise. This, however, isn't a Richard Paul novel. It's a return for the, uh, the three amateur sleuths, better known as the Marlowe Murder Club. Uh, this is the third book in the series. I reviewed the previous book, Death Comes to Marlowe, on the channel uh, last year. So if you want to see that, have a, have a look on, on the channel list. Right, okay, so what's the, uh, so for the uninitiated, who are the Marlowe Murder Club? The Marlowe Murder Club are three ladies who live in Marlowe, funnily enough. They're called Susie, Bex and Judith. Uh, Susie is a professional dog walker, but also uh, keen on uh, any side hustle she can get. Uh, Bex is the wife of the local vicar, but also, as we found out in the last book, a bit of a wizard invested in crypto. Judith, the eldest of the three, is a professional crossword setter and a naked swimmer in the Thames. So the three of them uh, have been very successful in solving murders in the past. So uh, I hear what's happening in this one, I hear you say. Well, story kicks off with Susie. Susie's going to a local Marlowe Town Council planning meeting. She's got a cunning plan for a development in the, in the back garden and wants to basically suss out the planning committee, see who's who. So meeting starts as normal. And it's chaired by the, the mayor of Marlow, a chap called Geoffrey Lushington. Uh, they all help themselves to a, to a drink, um, start the meeting, a whole bunch of uh, planning applications to go through. Susie's trying to suss out who are the people that would be, be uh, amenable to, uh, to being asked questions about development when all of a sudden Geoffrey, the mayor, keels over and dies. Turns out Geoffrey's been poisoned. This is the second week running. I've done a book with someone who's been poisoned. So quickly, the local plot are called. Uh, D.I., and now D.I., Tanika Malik, who the girl, the three girls have dealt with uh, before, um, arrives on the scene. And quickly, Susie, who's in the planning meeting, calls Judith and Bex to say, hang on, you know, the mayor's just, just keeled over and died. Uh, turns out the mayor has been poisoned, and he's been poisoned with something, he says, checking his notes, called aconite. Aconite is better known as the Queen of Poisons, hence the, hence the title of the book. But it's also known as Monkshood, Wolfsbane and Leopardsbane. Fans of Shakespeare will recognise it. It's the, it's the poison that Juliet took in Romeo and Juliet. And it's also the uh, poison that the three witches used in Macbeth. But I digress. So Geoffrey Lushington, the mayor of Marlow, has been poisoned. There's a bit of a problem there. Well, clearly there's a problem with Geoffrey. Everybody liked Geoffrey. He was a really nice, amenable guy. You know, the, the police start to investigate and, and they can't find anybody with a bad word to say about the guy. You know, he's, he's public facing, public serving, genuinely a nice guy. Who on earth would want to murder him? So Tanika, D.I. Tanika um, enrolls the, uh, the Marlowe Murder Club, i.e. Susie, Bex and Judith, into helping her. She actually takes them on as civilian advisors and off they go, trying to find out who on earth will want to murder Geoffrey. And thus the tale unfolds. It's a, it's a little bit, I guess, uh, Midsummer Murderish, where there are, there are lots of dodgy characters involved. We have dodgy architects, estate agents, you know, insert your own joke there. Uh, we have IT guys, we have wellness advisors. And we're taken down paths where some of these people seem to be you know, a bit dodgy, not, not quite right. And it turns out some of them are a bit dodgy, but they're not murderers. So we get to a, you know, a scene, a couple of chapters from the end, where there are several people that, you know, aren't quite right, but they don't really have a motive to murder Jeffrey. So really well done, really well developed. What I liked, the, 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 there's a development in the book of the three characters, of, of Susie, Bex and, and Judith, where... Uh, their, their characters are, you know, Susie uh, jumps to conclusions, and but he's, he's wondering if maybe she should concentrate less on trying to find every side hustle going. Bex is getting more confident as, as she goes on. 
and and even Judith is uh, you know, she's probably a little bit more more tetchy in this book than the previous two but their, their characters are well developed and I'd, I'd certainly recommend reading the previous two Marlowe Murder Club books um, you know to get to know the characters if you will although you can read this as a clearly as a standalone book so it's cozy crime it's very well done I enjoyed it I'd give it eight out of ten and I'd certainly recommend it um, that's it for this week's brief book review thanks for watching 1010 till we do it again Thanks.